Coming up is the first panel discussion of today with the experts from the investment sector who will be sharing with us their insights on the topic of sustainable investing, good for the world, bad for portfolio. Our panelists are Mr. Narong Sak, Plot Mishai, Chief Executive Officer of SCB Asset Management Company Limited. Ms. Supa Paul Lee Nabanjong, Managing Director of Grungsi Asset Management Company Limited. Ms. Tida Siri C. Samit, CFA, Chief Investment Officer of Kasigon Asset Management Company Limited. Mr. Shakrit Pudpan, First Executive Vice President of MFC Asset Management Public Company Limited. And our moderator, Dr. C. Kanya Yatip, Secretary General of Government Pension Fund. Good morning. We are going to conduct this session in English. So this is a panel discussion on the topic of sustainable investing, good for the world, bad for portfolio. So as introduced, we have with us here Kun Narong Sak from SAB Asset and Kun Supa Pon from Grungsi Asset Management. Good morning. Kun Tida Siri from Gasikon Asset Management and Kun Chakrit from MFC Asset Management. So a very good morning. Uh, thank you for being here. So we have about 45 minutes. So let's now jump into the first question. So um, under the theme of our discussion, sustainable investment, good for the world, uh, bad for portfolio, do you agree with this or not? And how? Let's start from uh, Grungsi first. So I don't believe that. And I, I think that uh, it, sustainable investment, uh, whether it's uh, on ESG is going to lead uh, to uh, return on investment, definitely, because we believe that uh, companies that have uh, operate on ESG principle will have good performance in the long term. And there has been a studies uh, in a few years uh, showing uh, the sustainability, sustainable investment uh, with ESG criteria, and it's really delivering a positive performance and uh, a company with good ESG principle would really yield good performance and, and stable business. And uh, companies with ESG have a very uh, short-term risk. Uh, they won't be sued, won't get into litigation, and they have lower capital cost. And currently today, uh, large uh, funds have actually used ESG as criteria for investment. And uh, therefore, companies with a good ESG principle could actually be part of these funds. And they're going to gain other benefits. Uh, the fund flows is going to come in and uh, through sustainable investment. And these funds, you know, uh, have very, uh, yield very good performance. For example, A, B, uh, a sustainable global, global climatic, right? it's a ma master fund of KFESG. So that is, and they are able to gain a 20 to 23% gain per year, or even the KF Thai CG, which is actually a fund focusing on uh, yeah, go good governance. Uh, we have actually gained 20% uh, this year. So uh, in conclusion, we don't believe that sustainable investing will be bad for the portfolio. It's actually on the opposite, that uh, sustainable investment, aside from yielding good performance, it's going to gain, we're going to gain risk benefits as well. So that is very precise and clear that sustainable investing can really yield a long-term profit and for Kungsi Asset Management, that is very clear. So I would like to uh, ask this question to Kun Narong Sak as well. And also, is there any other thing that you would like to add apart from what Kun Supa Pond just said? Of course, thank you very much. So for me, I think ESG is something that happens in a long time before in, in other countries. And 
you know, the overview of ESG as for Thailand, we are we are quite behind in terms of the ESG implementation. But when we face with the rapid changes and also uh, the climate crisis, I would say that this is this causes the mega trend that everybody is now focusing on this particular aspect and also the implementation of ESG and also how ESG can really provide us with the resilience for companies and also the sustainability for these companies as well. And how can we overcome and, and go through the changes and all, at the same time improve ourselves and also reduce the impact, mitigate the impra- impact of disruption or or cessation of businesses. This is something we have to focus on before speaking about profit. So sustainable return or long-term yield, these two aspects, the main key word to get there is that how can uh, we have to ensure that the companies in which we're, we're investing will have the ability to really change, adapt to change, and also mitigate the effects as well. So these are the mega trends that we're facing. And I think that can really lead to a change for companies in which we're investing. And also it can create the sustainability for our fund flow as well. And another aspect that I perceive in terms of ESG for the companies that we're investing in is the development of the process in their operation process for example the reduction of energy consumption the reduction of wastes and also the focus focus and prioritization on personnel the use of renewable or alternative energy also the consciousness in terms of the awareness of social issues these are all the things that all these company will, will enable these companies to really live in the society and also have the sustainability in their business operation and that is also related to profit but it is more important than profit and last thing that i think that is very important and the major benefit for these companies are before we getting into the the profit i would say that esg is will bring about the risk management and also will downsize the risks in our operation so personally i would say that the upside the upside of esg is really great and also esg is not really you know the the benefits that that comes with esg does not there are more to it than what i've said it can reduce the risk it can mitigate the risks mitigate the impact of the operation of the company and also can benefit the investment portfolio as well so that's why esg is a very important factor that will bring about sustainable investment and sustainable return as well but in terms of the yield and profit i would just go uh, give my answer in the next session so it has been clear from our two experts uh, that in order to be sustainable, it's I think it's worth uh, investing in these. Uh. So as you see the overarching picture, uh, it, which confirms that, you know, sustainable investment does not really actually yield a good return. So if maybe hearing from our third experts, uh, Maybe you can share with us your views, please. So actually, the first two expert has given a, a great example. Maybe I want to add a little bit uh, from uh, Kasi Gon, asset management, uh, the belief that, you know, sustainable investment is bad for portfolio. Uh, it may be because, you know, sustainable investment have limited uh, funds and also the limited accessibilities. So a sustainable investment uh, may not really answer in terms of the returns. But if you notice and observe that uh, sustainable investment is not uh, using the negative list uh, principle, but it's actually, you know, uh, recognizing uh, the individual business uh, criteria and how the company is performing and uh, the risk assessment. And at the same time, I think we can actually consider new uh, governance, for example, uh, startups in uh, EV, EV vehicle or in healthcare, for example. So this is how we can actually expand our portfolio. So uh, in, in terms of research, in connection what Kun Supapon has said, 
Uh, so we found that uh, Harvard has uh, studied in 2018 that they actually studied 200 listed companies from their performance. And we found that re return in investing of that uh, with high ESG, they would actually very high uh, return in general. And just given a, an example in the five years, and, and with also the COVID situation, the fund that focused on ESG actually have actually better return uh, than the benchmark. Thank you. So thank you very much. That is also very clear and precise. So now I would say I would pass this question to Mr. Chakrit. So basically, if I just tune in and we'll be hearing first from Kun Chakrit, what would be the key takeaway based on the question about the whether the sustainable investing is good for the world but bad for portfolio? So if I just tune in, hypothetically, what would be the key takeaway that you would like to share? So good morning. And of course, uh, in terms of, you know, investment and also investment, particularly in ESG, there are news that we can see that there is a restructuring, the merger and acquisition that we have heard from the news as well. But for in terms of the benefits of ESG investment, I would divide that into three categories. The first one is, I have the slide that I would like to share. The first one is the growth of the company. The second one is the productivity. And third one is the risk management. As provided by the first three speakers that they have touched upon these topics already. So the transition of all these benefits Firstly, on the growth uh, aspect, the ESG practices will basically open new markets, will bring in new clients, uh, new client base. For example, if we look at the original business operation, we may focus on energy. With ESG, we may move to renewable energy or alternative energy. So that is opening the new market. Or productivity, we will start to see the application of new technologies in order to bring about sufficiency and also efficiency of production, for example, to reduce greenhouse gas emission and so on and so forth. So this is the efficiency in resource uh, utilization and also the reduce uh, reduction of waste as well. So and thirdly, in terms of and also uh, in relation to the the relationship of the employees, employers, and, you know, for example, MFC, we just launched our company in China. In the first stage, we we struggled a little bit with our relationships with our employees, for example, the welfare that we would like, or parental advantages. So basically, taking into account the social aspect will, will enhance or will enable the business to basically expand. And also lastly, which is risk management, as mentioned uh, earlier by the three speakers, that risk management will also cover the, the management of litigation risks and also, you know, for example, Volkswagen that has been sued that, uh, that we can hear from the news relating to their greenhouse gas emission or carbon footprint and they have been fined massively as well so so the risks of being sued will, will significantly will be significantly reduced and also if we focus on ESG the the focus and prioritization of ESG will also eventually affect the profit and yield for the investors as well through all these three pillars or elements that I have just mentioned also we have to ensure that our business operation really cover ESG as well. So that is very clear. This is only the first question and the four speakers uh, answered in the same direction that sustainable investing is not only good for the world, but also good for the portfolio. First thing is that it's good for risk management and also Kunarong Sak mentioned Megatrend and everybody agreed on risk management. So also, 
Mr. Shakri from MFC also mentioned the growth, productivity, and risk management. And I would say that this session, for this first question, we agree that it's, it is not only good for the world, but also the portfolio as well. So I would like to go to the second question that since we agree that sustainable invest, investing or sustainable investment is good, so the, the question is that in terms of your own organization, what did you do in order to reflect the commitment of bringing about the sustainability for the country and the world? And what are the initiatives that your organization is doing? So I would like to just go to Kun Chakri with this question, please. So if you can put up my slide uh, for MFC, as we are listed in uh, the, we are a listed company and we uh, focus uh, this uh, on this issue from the, from the top down, from the board. So the overarching policy is that uh, we have the investment governance code or I code so that's uh, accordant with the uh, responsible investment working with the SEC. And this particular code actually covers seven principles, but uh, the important principle is actually having uh, a clear responsible investment and incorporating uh, ESG as a part of decision making in and also uh, incorporating a monitoring process and working with the investors to do engagement. So secondly, uh, MFC is also a member of uh, Collective Action Against Corruption or CAC. So there is a guideline uh, to prevent uh, uh, bribery and corruption of all forms. Thirdly, uh, we have the uh, CG board uh, that's appointed because uh, CGESG would actually uh, have to require uh, some expertise. So since we focus on this, we have appointed a CG board. And in practice, uh, MFC, uh, we have written out clearly that uh, we have our investment philosophy it has been stated that we need to do uh, quantitative and quant qualitative analysis, and uh, ESG is part of that uh, qualitative study. Moreover, we have also developed uh, ESG score matrix, and uh, this will have to be a continuous development once uh, we have more disclosures from uh, the companies. And lastly, uh, MFC have set up uh, the SG fund domestically and internationally. Uh, we have uh, MFC Select or MFCG that's in Thailand, in investing in Thai shares and we ESG renewable energy uh, focusing on uh, BGF sustainable energy fund. Uh, so overall, MFC, we are have uh, co committed uh, from the top down, from the board level, and you can see that reflecting in our practice as well. Wow, that's great. Uh, there you have clear policy and practice shows your commitment. You have code, you have board. That's very interesting. I think the uh, GPF would like to consult you on your about your ESG matrix. Maybe let's hear from Grung Si, Kun Su What are your strengths? And maybe you want to share with uh, the audience today and uh, well, what kind of commitment do you have? So please put up my slide, please. So we have our commitment in order to bring about the security 
prosperity and also sustainability for our clients. So basically, we focus on on providing our investors with the financial literacy in order to develop their financial status. And also one of the key points and one of the key strengths of, of Gongsi Asset Management is that we try to provide such financial literacy. We want to make them aware the importance of savings and also we want to create this financial security for themselves and their families. And this is this has been an ongoing and long-standing commitment of Gongsi Asset Management. We provided trainings and seminars, and we also provide investment channels for the public through mutual funds. And these investment opportunities, we perceive it as the, the chance to build a financial foundation and also the long-term benefit for the country in terms of the, its financial status as well. So in terms of the organization, we already declare the, the application and adoption of I-code and that has been set in our policy as well. We also in, include the ESG factors in our investment policy and we have the anti-corruption policies as well. And thirdly, we have prepared and also provide forms on ESG uh, to circulate the, the ESG form to our com to all companies in our universe so that they can provide their scores in terms of ESG and we engage with the companies in which we invested uh, regularly. Our focus is to basically uh, be the wind beneath the wings of all these invest uh, all these companies. We want to ensure that they will have the social responsibility and also to ensure that their operation is sustainable. What we are looking forward to doing is that we want to create the environment, the investment environment that will enable people to invest. We want to create the level playing field of all the investors with reduced capital. And also we want to make sure that investment planning is not something that is uh, available only for uh, financial or, or institutional investors, but also individual investors as well. So that will also lead to more sustainability and security of the financial system of Thailand as well. So that is very clear. So for GPF, we and also other other organizations that are focusing on, on providing knowledge to the public, I think GPF will learn a lot from you. And I would uh, appreciate the opportunity to discuss this further. And also another thing that is very important is that the ESG questionnaire due diligence, I would say that I the standard, I think what is important is the standard that the investment industry should apply like as a standard, as the comprehensive rules. And I think that this can be another project of all of us that we can come to discuss and launch in the future. So security, prosperity, and sustainability from KM, uh, from Gungsi Asset Management. Thank you very much. So next, Kunorong Sak. Thank you. I think uh, Thai Han or SCB is committed uh, uh, similar to people in the industry, whether we have I-code and collaborative engagement. And how uh, we see ESG, and just uh, recently we have signed on with the UNPRI, uh, stating our commitment uh, that we are committed. But I think what we want to see uh, as real commitment is bringing uh, ESG into practice. As asset manager, as a stakeholder, if we can uh, uh, integrate ESG into investment, and uh, the quality investment into and generating satisfying results, particularly in the Thai context, in uh, Thai shares. The question is, ESG investing in Thailand, is it something that we can rely on in, in, in Long term, large endowment. So, can I have a, a slide? Just to give example of the SCB Thai CG of uh, SCB 
a asset management. So we have established this in 2017, and uh, there is a 12.6% return. It may not look that high, but if you look at the next slide, that since 2017, uh, the Thai capital market uh, is experiencing uncertainties and very volatile, uh, especially uh, with an effect from COVID-19. If you pay attention here on this graph, we, you can see that we, uh, our investment manager, have dedicated uh, our time to manage this portfolio. And we find that the ESG score or factor that we're trying to build with the agreement with AIMC would actually be able to weather this crisis uh, and uh, you know come out better than the uh, other uh, funds in in the portfolio. There is a SCBBA fund uh, that's the unconstrained, so it's the same analysts, you know, managing these two portfolios. But uh, Thai CG is. Uh, using the ESG scoring. So we found uh, that uh, against uh, the SETCRI, the Thai CG actually outperformed uh, the SET up to 2.5% and outperformed SET50, that's 11%, and outperform uh, the SET TRI, a uh, 9%. So without the constraint, you know, uh, the others weren't able to match uh, the return from this. So that's really a journey from uh, SCBAM that we can uh, conclude that in uh, Thai market, ESG is actually a positive factor. And uh, you can see that's really, uh, uh, see, you can see how ESG has been put into action. And we have, you know, uh, invested our time uh, if it's just small, like 300 or 400 million. So this is actually showing uh, that we believe this is the portfolio of the future. It could be an interest uh, of the institutional investors. Next slide, please. And the ST uh, universe is actually very uh, narrow uh, because there is a, we have excluded some of the companies that have met uh, the criteria. But uh, using fundamental analysis and incorporating that in, we have that set of the universe of 71 stocks and uh, consisting of uh, 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 consisting of good ESG criteria. So this is actually merging that two worlds and coming up with the group of companies that we prefer and we see a uh, potential. And this is uh, something people are trying to do, whether it's uh, ESG score or matrix. And I think this is something that we that will require knowledge sharing between stakeholders, but in the context of SCBAM, this is how we have been doing. Uh, the, our ESG score actually leads to ESG quality. So we look at companies in their, uh, in, uh, based on their quality factors, and we conducted our studies with leading universities in, in trying uh, to find uh, the great criteria for particular in Thailand. ESG in Thailand, what is the true meaning of that? And the factors relating to that, if we go in depth, what are the details? So we have devoted our resources and time in order to be clear on the criteria that would make up the way we make decision so I think this is briefly uh, how we are committed uh, uh, to uh, the ESG and, and how we want to put ESG to work in the, our portfolio and we would able to produce results for our clients. And uh, this actually shows that uh, ESG is something that's uh, a plus uh, for sustainable investment. So thank you very much. Very interesting uh, case study. So I would like to just uh, 
uh, inform the participants that uh, GPF is developing its own ebook, and also uh, I would like to conclude and summarize the points presented by Mr. Narong Sak about ESG. So I would like to just include the the case studies uh, provided by Kun Narong Sak in the ebook as well, and I would like to just probably contact you in order to get the details. That would be my pleasure. So I would like to go next to Ms. Tita Siri with the same question, but for K asset management under your supervision, you have already adopted you and principal for respons uh, responsible banking. But what about K asset? What is your goal? Are you ready to adopt another the responsible investing principle? So as you have provided uh, kindly provided, Ms. Uh, the Secretary General. So K asset is part of uh, K Bank, and we also prioritize and and focus the sustainable business operation both uh, for all of the E, S, and G. So all the things that we do, we focus on sustainability and we also have been supported greatly by the bank, by K-Bank. So last year, we joined the UN principles for responsible banking. We are part of, we are a member uh, organization under that principle. And we also, and now K Asset is being uh, encouraged to be part of the UN principles for responsible investment, which will be uh, happening in the near future. So the application of ESG in our investment, we have started. We have started this process uh, seven years ago. We have developed the policy on ESG to be used and apply internally, and also we adopted ESG as part of our decision making in terms of our investment. We have conducted the evaluation on ESG of listed companies that we invested in, and also we developed the practices that are related. Uh, regularly, and we keep on updating these practices. We adopt, uh, we adapted, and also adjusted these practices to make sure that it's up to date, based on the ESG principle. And most recently, uh, over the past seven years, we have circulated the questionnaire. And I, I believe that I heard that you mentioned the questionnaire as well. So, the the development of questionnaire basically it can be considered burdensome in terms of you know the management company. Uh, an asset management company and i would say that we have only about seven uh, 60 to 70 percent of responses of all of the questionnaires that we circulated so we started to feel that probably this is becoming more and more uh, of a burden for asset management company so that's why we cancel the question uh, the uh, circulation of the questionnaire to listed companies but we created our own checklists a very detailed checklist and we basically attend the interview with the listed company and we will just use the information or data from the, the the public data and discuss all the information that we have acquired with them and this way we got to interact with the listed companies and it is one of the approach that we can enhance engagement with them as well so in terms of the evaluation and the criteria based on such evaluation we also create the mapping as well in order for us to score the E, S, and G pillars, and each of the industry will score differently among, uh, under these uh, each pillar. But either way, we, in terms of governance, I, I believe the governance is the most important aspect of ESG because it will bring about the transparency of operation and also the good governance as well. So the rating that we that we rate for ESG, we will uh, set the minimum at 30%. But you know, for E and S, probably it can uh, be go as low as 15 to 20%. But for G, for governance, we weight that a lot and we set the minimum at 30% for K asset. And for the establishment of mutual funds, in the past, we established mutual fund, uh, the K Thai CG IMF. And that is the the mutual fund established by the collaboration of all 11 asset management companies. And we, we will consider what should be included in the universe, what should not be included in the universe. But for the foreign funds, we also established two funds as well, which is Impact Investing or K-Change. And AUM is quite large 
for that for the K change fund. And also another one is specific to climate, which is K climate. So this is just my key takeaway. Thank you. Thank you very much. It is very inspirational and also that can bring about further collaboration. For example, questionnaire as investors, GPF also feels that it is quite burdensome as well, but we really do not have the solution to work around this this particular task, but we will uh, can further discuss in terms of how to basically reduce the burden in terms of questionnaire and probably shift to to have the checklist and we can have this universal or uniform checklist that we can all apply, you know, as a fundamental checklist for all of the players in the capital market. And this is very interesting. Thank you very much. So, so I would just go to the third question. Uh, Continuing uh, with Kun Tida Siri, so you know, as a asset management companies, what is the collaboration or co coordination among ourselves in order to really enhance or really materialize sustainable investment and to refrain from having negative impact for portfolio returns? So let me recap. Uh, I think in the past five years, uh, the cooperation between uh, asset management companies is very close. Uh, giving uh, some example, we have set up a CG fund from 11 asset management companies with the same uh, universe criteria, which is called the uh, Sovereign uh, Mutual Fund. And also we have also uh, committed or signed uh, with uh, up with the I code or the Investment Governance Code. So GPF is also part of this. And lastly, just recently, we have set up the uh, ESG Collective Action Committees with representatives from 11 asset management companies, which will actually enhance our engagement uh, with uh, companies uh, that has uh, ESG practice. And lastly, in connection to what the Secretary General has said about the questionnaire on how we can develop a common one. Just recently this year, uh, the association have uh, had the support from CBMS and MSP Thai and ERM. We have conducted a study and developed the ESG data framework. Uh, because many uh, asset management is experiencing the data collect uh, challenges with the data collection. So in order to have this central data would actually release some burden to the listed companies as well. And next year, I think we're going to see uh, the, the development. Wow, that's great. Uh, really looking forward to that ESG data framework. Maybe I want to now come back to Krung Si, Kun Su Pa So uh, what kind of cooperation do you have in the pipeline? And what are your plans? So with uh, the works through AIMC, and we have actually uh, and, uh, are all part of the ESG collaborative engagement, and we have the collective action, and we have engagement with the uh, asset management. So it's really uh, a force that would actually uh, create some change to the market. Moreover, uh, in many countries, they have uh, many countries have incorporated the, the uh, SDG goals uh, to into the, their strategy. So, if you look at SDG in the context of investment, SDG can serve as a map in order for investors to find. Uh, good investment. So there are seven uh, goals, right, in the SDG. For example, uh, the no hunger, zero, uh, no poverty, uh, good ed quality education, gender equality, 
clean water, uh, clean energy, uh, affordable energy, economic growth and employment. So investment that's irrelevant with the SDG could actually lead uh, to uh, eradication of uh, poverty and uplift the quality of life. So these listed companies uh, will consider this and I think it's going to be effective if us, us the uh, investing institutions would actually uh, put our efforts together. And we have a, a framework in the sustainably linked investment. And if we can actually meet that international standards, it would be perfect. And we want to see the cooperation that these listed company would actually work together and adapt uh, to the changing instead of focusing on the returns. And I think this is going to be benefit uh, for the companies and also long-term investment. So for GPF, we also uh we are also in the process of developing the SAA, and we're trying to incorporate the uh, goal 12 and 13 at the moment. So next, going to Mr. Shakrit, uh, for MFC, what are the challenges or what would you like to add further? So please put up my uh, slide, please. So what we have conducted so far, one of the things that uh, I believe that all of the speakers here are also encountering is the, the matter of data. In order to ensure that sustainability can really progress, what we need to do in terms of collaboration, and I would say that it is most important, is the data integration. So in terms of, you know, the listed companies they have to understand this particular point as well and what i would like to present is further to what miss sida tira siri has said one of the most important things is the metrics or to be more more uh, to to simplify is the the kpi of or the key performance indicator for asset management and also listed companies and also the requirement for these companies to basically disclose disclose their data because from the research that we have conducted you know a, a multi-party research the esg if we want that esg to have the positive yield we have to set esg as the material issue or we have to focus on the esg that are of uh, material nature for example the sasb the sustainably accounting standard board this is the organization that is responsible for this particular materiality map because sasb also conducted a wide research based on financial impacts and also among other things so this is just one of the points that we i would like to present and get across that these industries they can provide different data for example, the financial industry, one of the things that we can see more evidently in the dark red uh, boxes, these are the systematic rigs of, and also these are the financial, uh, the financial crisis that basically, you know, these rigs are the fundamental uh, cause or, or fundamental reason of all these financial crises and also the mining or construction material extractives minerals and processing these also involves the risks of gsg emission air quality waste management wastewater management or health for health care we can see uh, the risks involve product safety so be so based on these different industries their risks are also different in you know technology and communications the rigs will be other points so these are the key indicators or what we think that we should focus on in the collaboration of all these companies all these organizations whether they're the users of information or disclosure or, or the person who disclosed these information or they have to basically come together to to reach an understanding what are the data that they are looking for and what are the data that they should be disclosing so now we're focusing on data the materials what how to the due diligence questionnaires and also and so on and so forth so for kunarong sak 
apart from what the speakers, what the other speakers have already mentioned, what are other things that you think can you can do in order to really bring about the sustainable investing? Please, you know, something that have not been mentioned by other speakers. Okay, I'll try to not repeat uh, the answers of other speakers. So for me, I personally, you know, over the last wave, the latest wave of COVID, you know, over the last uh, several months, I can see that the shares, the equity in, you know, hospitals will, are benefiting from from the expectation or anticipation of the incoming of vaccination or the increase of vaccination. So basically this is just, you know, a retros retrospective uh, view. So what I think is that the shares in this particular group or the equity in this particular group, they are listed under the universe of ESG, whether or not. So this is just an, by way of example and just me looking back and I see that the shares of the hospitals, only two hospitals are listed in the investment universe. So that brings, that brought the realization that the process of getting uh, the process of being ESG certified or being in the ESG universe, I would say that the first uh, assumption that we have to ask is whether or not the listed companies know that they, whether or not they know that they're implementing ESG or not, and whether they know the long-term benefits that exist under the implementation of ESG, whether they know about the benefit of capital allocation to these ESG implementing companies in order to enhance their their uh, adaptation. So this is just the first step to basically overcome to, to be the AS, within the ESG universe or within the ESG ecosystem. So this is something that the asset manager will have to engage and also to tell them that we recognize the ESG implementation and that is the main criteria for our selection of equity or securities and we can basically publicly announce our policy or mandate that we are focusing or prioritizing the ESG implementation or even even more so if we already declare such a commitment on ESG. I'm sorry there is uh, interruptions and interference with the feed. Also what we need to do more is uh, is with the investors. Investors will have to realize that they are, they have more options, they have more alternatives in order to reduce the risks within their investment. These are things that that we are seeing more and more recognition in the investment communities in Thailand. Also, we can see that there are more and more commitment from the stakeholders in terms of the long term returns of e from from ESG investment and also risk management as well. So. I think this is something that will will enable will enable ESG in the practical level and also connect ESG to the stakeholders, whether they are the listed companies or investors. And also, more importantly, I would say that if we, as the asset managers and also the universities, the endowment funds if we established ESG dedicated funds or you know others of the uh, with the same nature and if we can put into action all these funds this can be at the movement this will create impact to the social sector and also other stakeholders and also even more so to the government sector as well sorry there is interference and I cannot really uh, hear the fee the reception is uh, quite poor so I would say that we have to create the ecosystem that is, this is more enabling. And I would say that this is not repeating the answers of other speakers. So thank you very much. Uh, that is very clear uh, that, that uh, the important thing is that we have to include all stakeholders. We have to include all value chains, other uh, players in value chains and uh, the, basically the whole system. We have about two minutes left. So I would like to ask all the speakers to basically you have 30 seconds to to share with us your key takeaway uh, key takeaways or your 
what you like to leave with the industrial sector in order uh, relating to sustainable investing starting from Kung CP, please. So as the public and private sector is actually moving towards the uh, sustainability goal, I think it's going to be a driving mechanism that would enable uh, finance uh, industry to have the sustainable ecosystem that would benefit all stakeholders. What about Kasikon, please? Some last words. So at the policy level uh, from the government, uh, however, in a, the micro level, I think the government can maybe come up with incentives and tools for, to attract uh, people to uh, ESG practices, whether it's uh, tax benefits for companies that uh, conduct in uh, responsible investment, and I think it's it's actually uh, would really benefit the company. Secondly, I think I do have several tools that actually promote sustainable investment. For example, the funds, uh, if they are investing responsibly with the government uh, company, it's going to generate the ripple effect for example, there's an example from Japan and Norway. And my last point is actually the regulatory institution can support sustainable investment in many ways, such as coming up with a central database, uh, creating awareness uh, in, in terms of the uh, and also maybe coming up with the KPI for the whole industry. And lastly, maybe uh, appropriate uh, sanctions. Taipanit or SCB, please. I think uh, I would uh, communicate to the government uh, to promote ESG, uh, not through law enforcement, but maybe focusing on incentives. And uh, relieving uh, some uh, burden if these listed company would want to conduct or adopt uh, ESG practices. And I think tax would be ideal. And I think uh, generating uh, this could really incentivize more companies to be on board. MFC, please. I think the government could play an important role in order to uh, get more commitment because uh, the, the government can actually guide the private sector and uh, to, to get that buy-in for that long-term commitment. With the clear roadmap, the private sector can actually plan long-term and the government could actually be a great example as well, as well as this, uh, the, the disclosure uh, of information so the other people can actually follow uh, along. And also the uh, cooperation between uh, various cooperation in order to gain that standard. So there's a lot to, to talk about, but we, unfortunately, that's the only time we have. So under this theme, sustainable investment, bad, good for the world, bad for portfolio has proven untrue. Thank you very much.